Hello everyone, today we are here once again with Mark Murphy and we're going to do some more Q&A sessions, ask a few more questions about things currently going on. So first of all, let's start. Mark, how have you been? Are you good? I'm all right. I'm here on holiday getting a bit of sun. This isn't like an alcohol uh, colouring, it's a bit <laughs> of sun panic. So uh, yeah, all good, all good, thanks. Lovely. So I wanted to speak a little bit about award ceremonies. With, you know, we've had the Oscars and the Golden Globes and everything recently. Were you surprised by any of the people that were winning, any of the losers? Not really. I mean, it's it's become a bit of a foregone conclusion. I mean, when you describe a year as uh, was a, a by Barbenheimer or something, mm-hmm. it's really a closed competition. I mean, Hollywood's all about uh, well, the academies, of course. The the prizes and the nominations are voted for by Hollywood. So the principal aim is we've got this big audience here. Let's make sure the right films are getting the recognition, at least with a nomination. And then when it comes to the big pictures, I think it's almost an intimidation process. I mean, Harvey Weinstein was famous for going on a massive blitz beforehand. It's it's not just a case of um if you think about it as politics, you know, you don't you don't have the party saying, yeah, well, we're going to stand for the next election and then just leave it at that. Of course, they go on a massive political campaign and that's what the films do. They and I don't know for what reason, but uh, they do go on a massive blitz. They'll put adverts in Variety and other trade papers saying, oh, vote for this, vote for that. Mm-hmm. film," And they just build the publicity. So it really is just a, a, a campaign rather than you know, watching some talent show and ringing up for your favourite singer or whatever. It's so no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so do you kind of feel that they're just basically redundant now? Award shows in general? Um, yeah. uh, I don't know. It's a tough one because it's weird because you look at the films that are uh, performing well in terms of the Oscars, like, Oppenheimer and even though it didn't win anything Barbie they're winning their Oscars and they're they're through the cinemas traditionally Oscar uh, qualifying films would often be released around Oscar time so if they did start winning awards they'd still the films would still be in the cinema so they could capitalize on that Oppenheimer and Barbie be and all the rest they're, they're not in the cinema so what are they going to do i guess the streaming revenues there but um i don't know I, I, I think redundant depends on whether the audience is interested or not if, it, if the audience isn't interested then it's redundant and if you look at the uh, audience figures for where the oscars were 10 15 20 years ago compared to where they are now then you, yeah I mm-hmm. think they're becoming somewhat redundant. Mm-hmm. Do you think the Oscars and things like this could be improved if the actual public were voting for the awards rather than the critics? Nah, because then you've got, it takes out the glamour and it does become a reality TV show. It then becomes something like the MTV Awards or, mm-hmm. or, or something. It need to be, because um, it's it's not a populist uh, awards it's um it's more of a, a recognition awards you know for example the, the the public probably wouldn't have um you know the where with all the understanding or even the ability to have seen a bunch of the films because either they're not released in in their markets or mm-hmm. uh, just slip under the radar and that's the thing if you're an academy voter you get sent well in the old days uh, a tape for everything you're judging so best foreign language short film documentary who's going to vote for that you know who's going to win the oscar between ryan gosling and cillian murphy well i think you know who the um the uh popular audience w- would go for it doesn't mean that he necessarily had a better performance so it does need to be um i i think there does need to be some credibility to it and i don't think you get much credibility when it's open to the public because, like I said, it's just about popularism then. Mm-hmm. Um, I, in terms of making them more uh, sort of audience-friendly, then I think it comes down to things like, you know, it, it lost a lot of its glamour, which was mm-hmm. quite interesting. 
um the people are too sanitized now it's also become too political and and, and political in a in a dull sense so when political moments do happen it's it's just uh par for the course and no one's really listening if if you go back to the times when oscars were political and you've got uh moments like marlon brando sending up a a cherokee indian to uh accept the award on his behalf and you have people like john wayne and uh others standing in the uh, wings wanting to come on and, and literally punch her because she was denigrating quite rightly or chastising quite rightly the fact that the native uh, americans have been treated so badly and that's why brando wanted her to go up or when michael moore won for bowling and columbine and he did his big speech which had half the audience cheering and the other half booing uh when he was protesting the war that was when polit politics in, in Oscars was interesting because it was only one or two very rare, so it actually stood out and meant something. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah, it wasn't so squeaky clean. Um, it's just become so sanitised and, and in many ways just, well, apart from when Will Smith went up and punched Chris Rock, <laughs> that's the most exciting thing that's happened in, in Oscars for a while. And obviously I think uh, Will Smith's, uh, a terrible person for doing so but yeah i think they just need to make the oscars more interesting by mm -hmm. by taking off the uh, safety wheels and letting people be people and uh not have uh this sort of sanity patrol uh sanitary patrol uh uh making sure the whole thing is sanitized and and, and dull no one wants to watch that yeah, I mean, I do think the thing I heard about most from the Oscars was the um, Ryan Gosling's performance of his song from Barbie. I heard more mm. about that than any of the actual awards, I think. Yeah, well, I mean, and another thing, I have absolutely no idea, going back to the Will Smith one, who actually won Oscars that mm -hmm. that evening. And that was the sad thing about that, is all the attention was on that one thing. So no one, no one uh, really, like I have no idea who won any Oscars that year, what Best picture was. Um, I, mean, I used to stay up. Obviously, in the UK, Oscars up and watch it because it was exciting. I used to love listening to the pundits in the uh, mm -hmm. in the, the breaks and, and and you know genuine excitement for who'd win. And now it's like I barely have time to watch the highlights. John Cena coming on that was probably the funniest one I uh, I saw. Um, and actually, that's something else. There are two things that get my goat about the Oscars. Uh, the first thing is the uh, red carpet. The interviews for the red carpet are so dull and mundane. In fairness, they always have been. But I just hope, given the amount of time to the question, oh, who are you wearing? I just hope at some fashion awards, when you get the designers walking down the red carpet, I hope they get asked, what's your favourite film? Because it's totally <laughs> irrelevant. The, the other thing is the In Memoriam, uh, which I don't want to say my favourite bit, but it is a genuine nostalgic bit of uh, interest of Hollywood, you know, losing these greats. In the past, they used to have the audience uh, or the sound of the audience uh, still um, audible, still playing whilst you had the memoriam playing with with whatever music that went with it and what you'd have is the audience clapping in appreciation of that person and of course you know when it was best uh sound editor it didn't get a huge round of applause because no one knew who the hell that was but when it was someone like i don't know paul newman the room goes wild mm -hmm. and i think it was that whole kind of oh that's not fair kind of thing you know, dying is not a competition, so it's not about awards, but it does give, you know, real recognition to the Hollywood stars that have gone when, when you when you sort of feel it uh, by sharing that with the audience. And now they get someone to come on and sing, and it's almost more about the person singing than it is the people that have sort of passed away. I want to hear the people clapping those who've died what a wonderful wonderful part of the show yeah so those are my bugaboos but yeah i mean the fact is i'm fairly safe in saying i'm not going to win an oscar so i, I don't <laughs> mind trashing them <laughs> someone who did win an oscar this year his first oscar was robert downey jr he for his supporting role in oppenheimer he has been in the industry for a long time 
uh, most notably for my generation at least, as Iron Man, it's very rare that those type of movies, the superhero movies, win lots of awards. Do you think that says something about the superhero movie industry? Um, well, yeah. Um, I mean, that's not entirely true. They do win, but not in the prestigious uh, no. area. So they'll win for the technical side because they are very well crafted. Um, but yeah, I mean, there have been a couple who've who've uh, been nominated or even won, like uh, Jackie Phoenix for uh, Joker, terrible mm-hmm. film, rubbish performance, didn't deserve it. Uh, and of course, Heath Ledger for also the Joker, amazing performance, did deserve yes. it. As to for uh, Oppenheimer, yeah, it was an all right film. He did a great performance. I preferred him in Tropic Thunder, which I think he was also <laughs> nominated for. Yeah, only so many in the people Golden else. Globes. Uh, of course, 20, well, it is almost 20 years later, of course, that film would be uh, uh, condemned and not allowed mm-hmm. because of the lack of humour in the world now. Everyone's so scared of it. But, um, uh, yes, yeah, superhero movies, it's, okay, Do they? why do they not win Oscars? Well, quite frankly, it's because why does McDonald's not have a Michelin star? You know, right. there's so many people going to see it and eat from it, but it's fast food for the masses. It's... It's not a stretch for these guys to play. They're not bringing anything new, apart from, like I say, Heath Ledger, who really did bring something uh, that left something with you when you watched it. It, it left an impression. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, apart from a few quirky one-liners and looking broody, there's not really much to uh, celebrate about the performances in the Oscars. Mm-hmm. So, in general, do you like super mo- superhero movies? Do you think they're past it now? Or do you just think they're just there to make people happy and for a bit of fun? I mean, look, the thing that superhero movies have in their sort of corner is the fact that their characters usually are with an interesting background. You know, that is what makes them uh, engaging more than just the ability to do something cool. So, if... You know, you, you, the, the characters have a, a strong human element and a, a kind of interesting action reaction to their journey, then, yeah, I love them. I mean, like, the, the Spider-Man films, uh, for me, Spider-Man 2, the one with Tobey Maguire, amazing. If that's on TV, I would always watch it, mm-hmm. simply because of that moment at the end where uh, Mary Jane, whatever her name is, Kirsten Dunst uh, sees him. Tobin Maguire's Spider-Man, great, great moment. And the last Spider-Man film, you know, with, with all three Spideys was great. X-Men 2, great film. Thor, uh, Love and Thunder, great film. So sometimes they do come out with them, but it was also the problem with it, and as everyone says, superhero fatigue. It's... Hollywood's gone through a weird uh, transition since it started, since its inception, in terms of it it is still the studios that are in control of everything. And at first it was filmmakers who were in charge of the studios. Then when they became so bloated and unable to support their own, um, support themselves financially and were getting into heavy debt, they had to be bought out by usually uh other great big companies like golf and western taking over uh paramount and um i think coke took over one of them for a while so and then you start getting a change at the top and for the last 15 20 years the people at the top have been the 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 sort of bean counters the people that like a, a blueprint and um And going back to McDonald's reference, you know, people love a quarter pound or a Big Mac. They're not going to suddenly say, you know what, let's take that off the menu and see how well uh, cottage pie and peas will do instead. Of course, Mm -hmm. it's not going to. They just repeat to winning formula. And that's with the superhero movies. They're so predictable now. There is nothing new. You know exactly what's going to happen. You know, open up, implement the kind of uh, show the threat, show our hero's potential, and then you know, pose a, this is what the problem's going to be. The Earth's going to be destroyed. This bad guy's going to give everyone leprosy. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, And by, like, you know, you know the superhero is going to lose someone he really likes. You know it's going to be, he's going to lose his powers and regret things. And it's 
just so predictable that people do still want to go to the uh, cinema and have a few shocks and surprises. Um, and when it just feels like it's being phoned in, then, yeah, people are just like, well, cinema is expensive. You know, mm-hmm. I can see amazing effects on Netflix now, you know. I don't need to come to see it on the big screen. It's it's nothing new. You know, would you go to the zoo all the time if they only had one animal? After a while, you'd be like, nah. Um, so, yeah, I think superhero films. Well, I think the thing is, looking at last year's uh, box office, who ruled it, one was a very dry drama, a long film. And one was a more uh, character-driven uh, uh, comedy. Uh, they weren't action films. They weren't the big superhero films. And I think when that happens, like I say, the bean counters are like, okay, well, that's where the money is. We lost all our money on things like the Marvels and other uh, superhero films that absolutely flopped. So... You know, they will go where the money is, and the money is no longer going with the superhero films. So, yeah, I think you're going to start seeing less and less of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, speaking a little bit on that, financing films, it can be quite difficult. Can you tell us a little bit how, how about how that process works when it comes to actually financing a film's production? Uh, Yes. Uh, it's the hardest thing to do in film because film is so unpredictable about how it makes money because when you make a film and you sell it, you're a long way down the list of of actually getting paid, and that includes for the investors. So the sales agents will be the first people. They'll take their, their fees, which will be, oh, look at us. We had to buy 10 new suits to sell this when we went to Cannes. Uh, they'll put in every cost they can and then they're the first people to get their costs paid and then they take a, a, a commission and of course that's before even the distributor releases it and they take their money uh, and of course a cinema or channel whatever splits the, the revenue so eventually it starts coming down to you and so you know let's say your film costs uh, five million to make and the film makes five million in the cinemas you're not going to uh, you're going to get maybe one and a half million coming back. So your budget's not cleared. So you have to make a lot more money. And so investors know this and it's a massive, massive risk. Um, and so you've got to find ways of making films uh, a safer investment. So yeah, you put forward a case um, about, uh, you know, getting sales agents to give you sales figures. You've got to show other equity members. You've got to show a cast. Uh, I let's say uh, you get Liam Neeson, and then you know you can pre-sell the film for twenty million. So that's a way of getting an investor on board to say, "Hey, look, you know, this is the value of the film now because we've got got an actor." Then you start getting the money, and what that means for people who can't afford big names is that they're screwed. So they have to go down other areas, avenues, which is going to like the channels who will then pay for these things, like a BBC or a Channel 4. Mm-hmm. And then your competition for winning a place there is is astronomical. You know, they don't, BBC Film 4, they don't make a lot of films. And of course, a lot of the films they do make are with repeat customers, are with, you know, the usual the usual suspects that they usually make films with. So to break through is very tough. Um, so it's it's a long drawn out process and, and there's more than one way, but all of them are hideously hard. Um, so yeah, it's not easy. And anyone who does it easily is the luckiest person on the planet because yeah, getting people to part with their money on such a risky project. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, industry, not project per se. Um, but yeah, in such a risky industry. It's uh... Well, I think we are slightly running out of time there, Mark. But thank you for that. Some really interesting points you made there. Hopefully we will be seeing you again very soon and we will be able to talk more about your recent filming in Hungary. Yes, it won't be winning any Oscars now uh, after I've this then, but it should. And it is amazing. I look forward to talking about it. Um, so yes, I shall go back to the sun 
And uh, I hope it's lovely in uh, in the UK now. Lovely. Thank you very much. Marvellous. All right. Thanks.